But the accounts make it clear that despite all these comforts, these luxuries, despite the well-to-do way of life, Siddhartha Gautama was very deeply dissatisfied. H.G. Uh, Wells, I remember, when describing this period in the Buddha's existence, says, perhaps rather appropriately, it was the boredom of a fine mind seeking employment, seeking occupation for itself, seeking something to do, something positive, something worthwhile. But the legends, the traditions, which we find in the Buddhist scriptures, speak of a sort of spiritual crisis, a sort of turning point when this young prince, this young patrician saw what the Buddhist texts call the Four Sights. Now scholars are not quite agreed as to whether he literally went out one day or four days and saw these Four Sights in the village street or whether the Four Sights are a sort of projection externally of essentially psychological and spiritual experiences. It would seem in fact that they do represent psychological and spiritual experiences which later writers transcribed as it were into an interesting uh, narrative and even dramatic form as the four sights. But these four sights are very expressive, they mean a very great deal and they, they summarize, even they crystallize uh, in a very powerful form uh, certain fundamental teachings of Buddhism and throw and cast a very great deal of light on the Buddha's own early inner spiritual development. So the story goes, the legend goes, that one day, one morning, and it was a beautiful bright day, the sun shining, the Buddha felt like going out in his chariot. So he called his charioteer whipped up the horses, they went out into the village, drove around, and then suddenly the Buddha saw his first sight. He saw an old man. And according to the legend, he'd never seen an old man before. Now if you take it literally, it means he'd been shut up in his palace and hadn't taken much notice of other people and hadn't really realized that there was such a thing as old age. Hmm? But you can take it in another way because sometimes we see something as though for the first time. In a sense we've seen it a hundred, a thousand times before but one day, one day a moment comes, a moment strikes when we see it as though for the first time, as though we've never seen it before. And probably it's something like this which happened in the case of the Buddha when he saw the first of these sights, the old man. And this gave him a sort of shock. And he said to his charioteer, who on earth is that? Because there was the old man, and in India old people look really old. When a woman's 40 she looks about 80, and men also pretty much the same because of the climate and the hard life. So there was this old man tottering along with a stick and a long white beard, and the room trickling from his eyes, just able to support himself and move along. So the Buddha said, what is this? And the charioteer, we are told, replied, well, this is an old man. So the Buddha said, well, why is he like that? Why, why is he so bent? Why is he so frail? So the charioteer replied, well, he's just an old man. So the Buddha said, well, how has he got like that? Well, everybody gets old. <laughs> it's natural. It just happens. Then the Buddha asked, or the future Buddha rather asked, well, does this happen to everybody? And the charioteer replied, yes, indeed, it happens to one and all. And the Buddha then put the, the, the crucial question, well, will this happen also to me? Hmm? And the charioteer, of course, had to reply, yes, even to you. Young as you are, this must inevitably happen one day. One day you will be old. So this word of the charioteer struck the future Buddha like a thunderbolt as it were, and he said, well, what is the use of this youth? What is the use of this vitality and this strength if it all ends in this? And very sick at heart, very despondent, he returned 
through his palace. And this was his first sight. And the second sight was the sight of a sick man. It's as though he'd never seen anyone sick before. And he realized that all human beings are subject to sickness, that human life is prey to sickness of various kinds. And he had to face the fact that he too might at any time, healthy as he was, strong as he was, be struck down by sickness. And then the third sight that he saw was the sight of a corpse. A corpse being carried to the burning ground on a stretcher. And you can see this sight in India any day. In India, uh, a funeral is a very interesting thing, and it's a very public thing. Uh, here, when you die, you're smuggled away in a little box, and that's that. No one sees anything of you. Hmm? You're just quietly disposed of like so much garbage uh, that no one even wants to look at. Just put into the incinerator or into a little hole in the ground to cover it over. But in India, it isn't like that. When you die, you're laid out very publicly <coughs> in the best room of the house and all your friends and all your relations come and have a good look and say, ah, well, looks just like old so-and-so. Yes, it's him to the life, as it were. Well, he looks quite happy, quite peaceful. Yes, bye-bye. And uh, they shed a tear too, throw a few flowers on the corpse. And then the corpse is hoisted onto the shoulders of four strong men and borne through the streets uh, with the face still uncovered and uh, the corpse is jolting along on the shoulders of these people and it's a hot day and crowds of people are falling behind and the people passing by they, they look and they say oh yes look it's old so and so didn't know he was dead look <laughs> they're going to take him to the burning ground and this is what happens in India so the Buddha saw a procession of this sort people moving along the corpse and he asked the charity what on earth is this the charioteer which seems to have been quite a wise man, the charioteer said, well, this is just a dead body. And of course the Buddha asked, well, dead? What's happened to him? Well, you can see he's stiff, lifeless, doesn't breathe, doesn't see, doesn't hear, he's dead. So the Buddha sort of gave a gasp and he said, well, does this happen to everybody, this death? So the charioteer drew a long sigh and he said, well, I'm afraid so. And of course the Buddha realized it would happen also to him one day, so this also struck him, this <coughs> revelation as it were, very forcibly, like a thunderbolt. And he was brooding over these things. Huh? He'd come up against what nowadays we call these existential situations, which one can't escape from. You don't want to grow old, but you can't help it. You don't want to fall sick, but you can't help it. You don't want to die but you can't help it. So you start asking yourself the question, well, how do I come to be here? Here I am, a living human being. And I can't even live as I want to. I want to go on living forever, young and strong and healthy. But it doesn't happen like that. I don't want to die, but I have to die. So what is it that has brought this situation about? Here am I with this urge to live and to go on living, but I've got to die. Why? What is the meaning of it all? Why this mystery? Why this riddle? Why have I been made like this? Is it God who is responsible? Is it fate? Is it destiny? Has it just happened? Is there an explanation? Or is there no explanation? In this way the Buddha was brought up against these existential situations of life and death and he started thinking about them very, very deeply. But he saw a fourth sight. And this sight was the sight of what in India is called a sadhu, a holy man, walking along the village street with his begging bowl, going from one door to the next for alms, very quietly, very peacefully, in very ordinary dress, a yellow robe, a saffron robe. But he seemed so calm, so quiet, so peaceful, that the future Buddha thought, maybe he has understood, maybe he knows, maybe this is the way. Maybe I should do likewise. Maybe I should cut off all ties, all connections. Go forth as this man. Maybe I shall see the truth. Maybe I shall find an answer to these problems which are tormenting me. 